I'm really glad, Christy, that you brought up this thing about when you cried in the office. Um, and since we're all confessing, I've done it too. Uh, and of course, hindsight is always 2020, right? Um, and the question that I wanted to pose to the panel, and I'll, maybe I'll begin with you and others can chime in, is that when you look at uh, women who are at mid-level aspiring to senior, um, and at the same time, many of them are dealing with multiple demands on their schedules. You know, their careers are peaking just as their family lives are at their peak, etc. cetera. Um, what do you think, and then the two parts of the question, the first part is, what do you think women need to start doing? And what do you think they need to stop doing in order to reach higher leadership positions? Are there specific things that you think, I think, you know, women really need to change their perspective or how they're approaching it. Um, and, and, and after you, I'm going to come to you, Madhvi, because I, I know you have some really incredible insights there. Um, I think that women need to feel confident that they can start asking for what they feel they want and need in their careers. That was a big, those were big moments for me when I really felt that, and, I, and maybe it comes more naturally to men, but again, it's very, we're, we're, I think we're all realizing we're not going to be able to make many generalizations here today, but um, but I do think that was those were big moments for me when I realized I should really just ask for what I felt I wanted and needed in my career, and I'm not sure women always feel that they can. Um, in terms of what they should stop doing, I think that women should definitely stop um, viewing leadership positions or opportunities as if there's only one or two for women in a company and. They've got to edge each other out or somehow act like a man to get that role. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, that, uh, I think that creates more oxygen for, for all women and all men to, to grow together in organizations. Yeah, that's right. I, I might add to that in, 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 in saying that not just that there are just a few leadership positions, but even what we are choosing to define as success, what we are choosing to define as leadership, uh, while many, many women might aspire to be on boards, all women don't aspire to be on boards. Yeah. And that you have the opportunity and the ability to make a difference where you are at any given point, rather than just thinking, oh, the day I become a CEO is the day that I'm going to be making a difference. So I'm really glad you, 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 you brought up this point of expanding the definition of how we view leadership. How about you, Madhvi? Because I, I, we've talked about this before, and, and this is a question since a lot of you here have been at many of these women leadership discussions, you know that somebody will ask a question about the whole work-life balance aspect and how they ought to be doing it differently. And, and I cannot think of a, a better person than Madhavi to be answering this. And her, her insights on this are quite incredible. But you know, my insights are quite um, unconventional. So a lot of young women today believe that um, they should defer getting married and defer getting having babies so that they can focus on their careers early in their career and on their stripes and so on. And my experience has been quite the opposite, which was to say that get married early, have your children early, uh, <laughs> and that's the stage when you're really a worker ant. You know, you're a worker bee, you're a worker ant, you're a commodity. And you know, even if you're, you know, sick in your first trimester or if you've had to take the three months off after the baby and all that, no one's really missing you, right? <laughs> and just the momentum of batch parity and so on will see you through for a few years. But come the time when you're middle management, senior middle management, and that's when you're really slugging it out and you're fighting for that space in the pyramid which is getting narrower and narrower, at that time, you simply cannot afford to have to be away mentally, physically, emotionally, whatever, as compared to your other colleagues who are probably as bright as you and working you know, 80% longer hours than you. Because at the end of the day, in the cold light of objectivity, two equally talented people who are putting in different amount of hours are going to deliver different outputs. And so that's not the stage when you want to be, have to be having to be struggling with your first trimester and with babies and with nappies and all the rest of it. So according to me, actually, young women should get all of that stuff out of the way. Right. Uh, actually, very early in life. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that uh, Minister Mentor Lee Kuan, you will be very happy to hear <laughs> your point of view uh, on the topic. Uh, so there's just one other thing, which is that I find that um, 
a lot of young couples um, have a lot of tension over things which are actually very simple, you know, the, the regular chores in the house. And I'm thinking, why are they arguing about it? You know, in certain places like in Singapore and India, you have the benefit of having domestic help. And so what if it costs you half your salary to be able to afford that? You have to take a longer term view of it. And just invest in good quality help and get all of that rubbish out of the way so that you're not having to think about and waste time arguing about the trivial stuff and you're actually able to focus on your careers. And before you know it, the children will be grown up and you don't need to depend on the domestic help anymore and you're good and you're fine. And you've sort of done that without arguing and bickering at home endlessly. Yeah, I, I, I agree and I, I think it's true. I mean, I, my son is only seven, but the other day he had problems holding my hand while walking to kindergarten. So they do grow up faster than you want them to. 